Luca Toni, Andrea Barzagli, Edinson Cavani, Javier Pastore, Paolo Dybala, and Kyle Lafferty. These are some of the legends who have played in the pink of Palermo. And that is who we are going to be rebuilding today. We're taking our talents over to Italy to the Serie B team. The team who play in all pink. They have a fantastic logo. They have fantastic kits. Not that you can see them in game because I don't have them. Uh, but this club is in Serie B. And if we take a look at their history, they were, they, they, they've been in Serie A a decent amount. But they find themselves all the way down in Serie D at one stage. They've got themselves promoted. They're back in the second tier of Italian football and our job today is to take them back to the top of Italian football. They don't necessarily have the supreme talents and the forward line that they did have back in the day. I mean Cavani and Dybala as a strike partnership would have been absolutely breathtaking when they were a lot younger. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing guys. We are going to be Palermo manager. If we dive into the tactic. There is only one tactic that we could use for this one out of the latest releases from my good friend GYR, which you can check out on the channel. I'll leave a link to it down below. It is the Italian job. And if I quick pick without restriction our best 11, this is what the team looks like. It had to be the Italian job. It had to be a five back because we are in Italy. I think it's going to be a good showing of this one. Obviously, you know by now we use the GYR tactics because we promote them on the channel. It's just a little bit of cross promotion. And you guys get to see how things go with this tactic for five seasons with a bit of a different team. This is the team, though. We've got lots of players in on loan, as you can see. Uh, several loanees in this start in 11. But we're going to see what we can do with it over the course of the season. If we go into the competitions tab, this is how we are looking. We enter in the preliminary round for the Coppa Italia. We have to qualify for the bloody Coppa Italia with that bat. Um, so it's going to be interesting there. And the board expectation for Selly B is to finish in the top half. Now, if we look at the table, there are some teams in here that you would probably associate with being in the Serie A. Uh, obviously, Brescia, Cagliari are a team that have been in there recently. Parma, again, have that historic uh, nature there. We've done a rebuild with them. Venezia, again, Genoa. These are all teams that have been in Italy's top flight over the past couple of years. And our job is to overtake some of these, get ourselves back into the top flight, and just see where we can take things, basically, over the course of a five-season rebuild. If we look at the season preview, obviously, we are one of the promoted teams into this division. But we are expected to finish in seventh. So there is a bit of a weight of expectation here. So let's see what we can do in season number one. So guys, here we are. This is the end of the first season and we are champions, baby. Yes, the Italian job tactic has gone and done absolute wonders. We only lost four games out of our 38 games. 12 draws though, which is a little bit frustrating, but it is Italy. 22 victories as well, which is really, really nice to see. We get ourselves promoted. Regina also get themselves promoted. And then there is a lot of teams in the playoffs. But thankfully, we did avoid that. We got to the second round. We did qualify for the Coppa Italia. We got to the second round um, where we unfortunately made our exit. We lost 2-0 to a team in our division, which is rather disappointing. It's not even like we got knocked out by one of the teams in Serie A. But... Alas, it is what it is. Our main focus was the league. Um, the board wanted us towards the end of the season to finish in the top three places because of our good start. Um, and we kind of did continue to go on. Plus 33 goal difference as well. Mwah. We have done superbly well. If I go onto the home screen, you can kind of see here. Uh, Gonaro Tutino is our top goal scorer. 38 goals for him. The highest average rating of a 7.5 as well. Uh, Valerio Ver uh, is our top assister with 14 assists as well. Um, and the team looking like they have absolutely absolutely steamrolled this division. I'm really, really happy with the progress. Obviously, Venezia are a team that you would expect. Spal have been in there in the top flight as well. So uh, we're in good company here. I'm really, really happy with how things have gone. And we will be playing Serie A football next season. Things on the financial side are a little bit tight in Italy. So we're going to see what we can do. We are committed to spending 190k in terms of our wage budget. And our wage budget for next season is £354,000. We've got a transfer budget of 555 Okay, but I'm probably going to use most of that in wages, picking up as many free transfers as we possibly can because we need to correct this overall balance of £5 million worth of debt. We've also got £5 million worth of net debt here. So we really, really need to sort out the financial situation at this club. Let's go and strengthen for a season in Serie A.
So guys, here is the transfer update on your screen. Some of these transfers happened in January. We did try and improve last season as we were going through. Simone Zaza, the penalty shuffle extraordinaire, came in last season. I forgot to mention him last time around. He only played five times, didn't do very well. That's probably why I didn't mention him. But we have added a player really, really early that we did spend a little bit of money on. 850k, yes, it's installments, guys. Uh, on Leo Stulach comes in as a good player for us. Defensive midfielder can also play as a central midfielder as well. So it gives us a little bit of versatility there. He is currently out on loan, but we did buy him to send him back out on loan. I think it's a good investment. He's not really ready for the first team yet, but attribute wise looks absolutely fantastic. So we'll get him in, get him out on loan, and then we can push on from there. In terms of some of the other transfers, guys, this is the bulk of it. I will shuffle it around there. Claudio Gomez is the biggest departure. £1.3 million to Bristol City. He goes uh, defensive midfielder for us. Uh, played a decent amount for us last year. 30 appearances in all competitions or in the league sorry uh, didn't do necessarily too well uh, and he has now gone over to Bristol City to play in the championship shock they haven't been promoted we also sold this guy as well you know uh, over to Venezia um, looks like an okay center back but not at the caliber that we need for Serie A um, so that's a bulk of the money that has come in 2.2 million pounds we've been out and kind of uh, got as many of the free transfers as humanly possible as you can kind of see here loads of players signing on that first of July. Vinny Cometo is one of those players. Sharon Dorr, another one of those. Henrique Perea, another one. Benfica B, produce some absolute gems, guys. Uh, and you can see some of the players in here. Yes, we have picked up this guy. We've got Phil Jones on free transfer, guys. You need experience. I don't want you guys in the comments absolutely flaming me for this. You need experience in your team, and this guy can really provide that in terms of the fact that he's been there and done it all for Manchester United. We picked up Jonathan Vieira as well as another notable one on a free transfer. 33 years of age, but can still do it okay the physicals aren't necessarily there but creativity wise this guy's gonna kill it and then the last one we spent 1.1 million pounds on this guy kelvin yaboa he comes in obviously you will be familiar with that name if i go into the information tab you can see anthony Nabo anthony yaboa is a favor personnel uh, as you kind of would expect that he, he is i've done it i've done a genoa rebuild right this guy's brilliant. He's fast, 15 pace, 16 acceleration. You love to see it. Good off the ball, good at finishing. I have a feeling he's going to be a star player for us moving forward. But uh, 1.1 million pounds for him from Genoa. Uh, he was out on loan at Augsburg towards the end of the season last year in the Bundesliga. Uh, and now he's going to be our star striker. So the team is looking somewhat different. If we quick pick without restriction, our best 11. Ladies and gents, this is how we look. Yaboa goes straight in up top. Vieira comes in in that midfield as well, which you love to see. Phil Jones actually will play at centre-back, which you love to see as well. Three and a half star current ability player, according to my assistant. Um, but I think this team's going to be pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. I think we're going to avoid relegation. And if we go into the competition tab, that is basically what is expected from us. In terms of the league, they want us to fight bravely against relegation. If we have a look at the season preview, Napoli won the season last year. Inter are favourites. We're a thousand to one to get the title which we're not going to do in season number one but i just want to avoid that relegation and then go on and kind of strengthen as much as we possibly can in terms of the cup though we enter in the first round we take on pisa the board wants us to be competitive in that so let's see can we survive relegation with a newly promoted palermo side so the first season back in celia has been an absolute dream yes we are turning into a very difficult team to beat it would appear uh, we actually finished in eighth this is by far and away better than i would expected we finished above verona we finished above roma uh torino some of these clubs that are quite good udinese have a habit of being quite a thorn in my side if you watched our network my network game on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash game in UK, where I was Lazio manager, Udinese were an absolute pain in my ass. So um, you can kind of see that we're above some of the big boy teams as well. Uh, and we finish in eighth into a disappointing season for them. They finish down in seventh. Napoli win their second title in a row. Uh, and Kevin, uh, Calvin Yaboa absolutely smashing it for us. 19 goals, three assists for him in all competitions. He's now got 16 paces to go along with that 16 acceleration. And I think he will go from strength to strength now. He's 24 years of age um, and I think he can really push on. In terms of the cup though we got to the second round where we took on Salonitana and we got defeated. We lost 2-0 away from home. It is the cup. I'm not too bothered. Our main goal was to avoid relegation and we did it.
We did it, guys. We did it. Uh, the board expectation changed halfway through the season, and we said we'd go for a top half finish, uh, which we duly secured. As I mentioned, Kelvin Yabo was our top goal scorer in all competitions. Uh, Ken Seema got us our most assists. This guy right here, uh, he was playing for the most part. If we go into the tactics, you can see he played most part as a left wing back. So to get a lot of his assists as a left wing back, he's done really, really well for us. Uh, and I think we're moving in the right direction. If we go into the transfer history stuff, go though, guys, I do have to talk to you about a free transfer that we did pick up. Dennis Priat come in uh, as an experienced veteran, again, to kind of basically play in the central midfield spots, can play in a number of positions as a natural, comes in as a star player. He was released from Leicester City, and uh, yeah, we'll snap him up. He played 20 times for a 6.5 average rating, but he's kind of doing a lot of the grunt work here and won't get a lot of the, uh, a lot of the praise. We also picked up Augustin Al... Al Mendra, I always butcher this guy's name when we pick him up. He's a former Boca Juniors player. His contract was up in December. Yes, their contracts run from January through December. His was up in December. Picked him up on a free transfer as well. So some good additions to that midfield, which kind of helped us push on a little bit from January. Moving things forward, though, we don't have any continental competition next season, but what we do have is a problem with our wages. We are overspending drastically uh, and we have no transfer budget to kind of really make this better. So it's going to be really interesting to see what we can do. £6.2 million pounds in the overall balance. The debt and loans is all sorted now but we are overspending every single week on our wages so we're gonna have to make some sales and see what we can do for season number three okay guys so transfer update for season number three and i did say we were gonna have to balance the books a little bit and on your screen you can kind of see yes we have done that 3.7 million pounds made and only 350k spent and that is on a loan as well the biggest bits of business, Leo Stulach has gone to uh, a team in Spain for £1.6 million. Francisco Di Mariano has gone to Venezia for £1.3 million. Thanos Petsos has gone to Venezia as well for 500k. And we've also sold Mika, uh, Mirko Pigliaselli to Roma for 250k. So this is the big bulk of the money coming in. And you can see some of the names on the left-hand side. We're basically trying to improve this team as much as humanly possible. We like spending as much as humanly possible, um, including this loan here. Uh, this is my this is my favorite edition, I think. Amel Bella Kochap comes in from Southampton on loan. I like this player. If you saw the save that I was doing on Twitch for a period of time with Southampton where I was spinning the wheel and stuff like that, this guy was actually quite good and even had to play some time in goal for me uh, so i'm happy that he's come in to this team which looks a little bit different which if we quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is how we're running things guys um this is how the team looks and i'm really really happy with some of these pickups uh, and how the team is looking moving into this season i'm liking this strike partnership as you can see we've got a lot of three and a half star players now including bella kochup and stuff like that i think we are ready to rock and roll if we go into the competition tab though obviously we do have just the two competitions uh the board just want us to be competitive in the coppa italia i'd love to win a coppa italia in the next three seasons I don't know if it's doable. Uh, and the mid-table prediction for the Serie A and expectation for the Serie A is going to be interesting again to see how we do get on. If we go into the season preview, though, we are 500 to 1 to win the title, um, which is going to be interesting. Cremonese, Monza, and Benevento have all been promoted, so it's going to be interesting to see how they get on. Sassuolo in the Champions League as well um, are predicted to finish ninth. So again, it'll be interesting to see how they get on with the extra fixtures, um, whereas we have no continental competition to worry about. So hopefully, we can can kind of push forward and maybe get a Europa League spot. Who knows? Let's see at the end of season three. Okay, guys, so we pushed on for season number three, and I told you this team was going to be a little bit special because not only have we finished third in Serie A, we've won the Coppa Italia. Yes, this team has gone off this season, and Kelvin Yaboa has been the main reason. This guy has absolutely killed it. Last season, we drew two too many games, and we've converted some of those into victories, as you can see. Inter are back on top in Italy. Napoli finished second, we finished third, and Juve finish in fourth. Um, as I mentioned, Kelvin Yaboa, I'm going to shout him out now. 30 goals and 9 assists in 40 competition games. Competition games in 40 competitive fixtures. Um, the guy's a stud. I told you he was going to be a stud. I knew he was going to be a stud. 
He's a stud. He scores goals. Uh, 25 years of age now, six foot one, four star advance forward. Good on both feet. Nice and physical, nice and fast. Good off the ball. Valued at 30 million quid now. Uh, absolutely huge. Uh, in terms of the Coppa Italia final, we took on Juve in this final. We beat them five goals to one. Uh, Kelvin Yeboah with two, uh, Andone with another two, and Samu getting the uh, fifth and final goal there. The goals for Locatelli and Odin Thiago Holm for Juve as we kind of blew them away, basically. Um, in, including some of the players that they've got. I think that's a massive achievement for us. Uh, three uh, XG as well to their 0.87. I think we definitely deserved this Italian Cup trophy, which is really, really nice to see. In terms of the rest of the team, though, Calvin Yeboah absolutely smashed it, as I did say. Uh, were there any January transfers for me to update you on? Yes, there was. We picked up uh, Loic Abade, uh, a centre-back coming over from Rennes in France. He is very good, if you've not seen him before. Uh, an absolute bargain still, I assume, is contract was up at the end of the season i can't quite remember um but ultimately guys we have been powerful in this season i wasn't expecting to finish third and i wasn't expecting us to win the copper italia if we go into the finances for next season obviously champions league money hasn't hit yet but we do have a transfer budget of 6.7 million pounds and then a wage budget increase of around 100k a week the overall balance is now in the positive and that is only going to go from strength to strength by being in the champions league in season number four let Let's get to spending. Okay, guys, so season four, we've really stepped things up now. We've been super active in the transfer market, and on the screen right now is all of the business that we have done. 21.5 million pounds made out of some of these player sales. Now, all the ones for high figures I've highlighted there. We sold our goalkeeper. Guga's gone. Samu's gone. Framberger, the right wing back, he's gone. Three of those go into Palka as well. Uh, the goalkeeper going into Rangers for 7.5 million pounds. Enrique Pereira has gone uh, for 1.3 million pounds. Um, so you can see, guys, we've really, really stepped up and made some absolute balling money. Sharon Dorr has gone out on loan again. Um, hopefully he can uh, push on a little bit because this is a disappointing instance of our main man Sharon Dorr. Let's talk about some of the players that we have managed to bring in though. Let's arrange them by the money spent. Tom de Crow comes in from Bordeaux. Another defensive midfielder for us there. Can also play as a natural in central midfield and ultimately if we have to can play right wing back. Looks like a very good pickup for us there. Uh, 8.5 million quid for him. Uh, Antonio Gallo comes in from Fiorentina 7.25 million left back replacement obviously looks like a really good player uh, very well rounded as well nothing awful about him which you absolutely love to see runs down the ball with the left knocks the ball past his opponents as well I'm a big fan of that. Also hugs the line, which you love to see. Uh, Anthony Rulalt. I've always butchered this guy's name, even when I had him at Versailles. Uh, he comes in. This guy's an elite centre-back. If you've not signed him this year, have a look at him in your saves. He comes in from Toulouse. We spent £6 million on him. He's very, very good. And it wouldn't be a save in Italy without the big man. Lorenzo Luca is here. We've bought him from Pisa, uh, hoping, hoping that he can kind of do Lorenzo Luca things. He's not as good in FM23 as he was in FM22, but 5.25 million pounds, I think is good enough for a guy who scored 21 goals in the second tier last season. Uh, Yusuf Atal comes in from Osasuna as well. Tony Lato, Robert Popper. You can see some of these players here. Some of the freebies as well. We picked up Arthur, uh, former Juve, and I, I'm going to say Liverpool, but he barely played at Liverpool IRL. Uh, central midfield. Still has it in him. He's 29 years of age. He's got 22 caps for Brazil. Not there physically, but creatively again. 18 passing, 16 technique. I think he can unlock teams. I really think he can unlock teams. We picked up another player that people might know in Hannibal Mejbri on a free from Manchester United as well. Again, can kind of cover a lot of positions. Uh, and I think Hannibal can go on to be a very good player for us. If we go into the tactic though, guys, we've kind of revamp this team uh, and this is how we are looking i think that strike force of yaboa and luca yeah that's gonna cause some damage we've got the speed from yaboa we've got the height of lorenzo luca and the physical power i think we are ready to go this team is looking solid a lot of the players are our own now which i love to see um and i think we are ready to cause some damage if we go into the competitions tab though we do have lots more competitions to fight for this season setting out of course the board wants us to finish in mid table we are into the champions league we will enter the league phase the board wants us to get to the quarterfinals of the coppa italia and we do have the coca-cola super cup where 
where we take on Inter Milan as well. So let's get to going and seeing how the odds look for season number four. Inter are favourites to retain their title. We are predicted to finish in 10th, 150 to 1. So the odds are getting shorter, but we're still not predicted to get anywhere near that Serie A title. Let's see what we can do with this big and big and fast strike force up front. I thought there was some damage in this strike force, and it turns out that there really is. We've won Serie A in season number four. Now, I will say, Serie A, out of all the main leagues in Europe, is the easiest one to win, in my opinion. This is coming from a guy who's never actually won it in our network save, but it's the easiest one to win because so many different teams can win it. You don't have that juggernaut anymore, like a Man City, like a PSG, like a Bayern Munich, to overcome. I think it's one of the easier ones to win. And we've done it here. We've absolutely smashed it. Only two defeats all season against Lazio and against AC Milan at home. 11 draws, though. Imagine how clear we could have been if we turned some of those draws into wins. Um, obviously, 25 victories, 11 draws. We only won the league by one point, but one point is all you need. In terms of the Champions League, we got into the knockout rounds where we were ultimately knocked out by Barcelona 5-2 on aggregate. So that kind of goes to show the work that we still need to put in to lose to Barca like that. But it's kind of a tough draw. We are knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia by Napoli. No chance of retaining this time around, which is disappointing to see. If we look at the final, Napoli did get there, but they did lose to Inter Milan. We did beat Inter in the Coca-Cola Super Cup, though. Three goals to one in extra time. Uh, Lorenzo Luca equalized after Lotaro Martinez put them in the lead. Uh, and then we had two goals in extra time to cover ourselves there to make sure that we secure another piece of silverware in the season opener. In terms of the Champions League, though, because I know you guys like to see the Champions League or European competition runs. Uh, this is who we took on. AZ, Club Bruges. We beat Bayern Munich. We lost to Porto. Beat Lens. Beat Michelin. Lost to Barca. Lost to Arsenal. And then we have Barcelona again in the knockout. So there is still some work to do, but we've got ourselves a Serie A title. Going into season number five, though, this is how things are looking. 38 million in the overall balance. 19.7 million pounds in terms of that transfer budget. And we've got 160-ish K in terms of our wage budget to strengthen this team for one push into the Champions League. We couldn't, could we? Okay, guys, so before we get into season number five, this is the point of the video where I ask if you are still watching to comment something down below to let me know that you are still watching today's video. And today's comment, I just want to see pink. Just the word pink. I just want to see pink. It's the kit they play in. It's a fantastic kit. I love it. It's the way that my room is decorated today in terms of the lighting. So just comment pink down below and let's get into the transfers for season number five. Now, I do have one part X that I forgot to mention last season. I always seem to forget the January transfers. Uh, but we bought in Davide Fratesi from Sassuolo for £22 million and a part exchange. Uh, it Does it say the player that it says there? No, it doesn't. Okay, so he came in last season for us and the part X was da uh, Damiano Lorenzo who has gone the other way. Uh, he is a new gen player who they were interested in, so he's gone the other way just to kind of keep them happy I suppose they did get 22 million to go along with that as well so I think they should be happy with it in terms of our transfer business this time around we spent big 37 million pounds on three players to kind of see if we can push ourselves to the next level we sold a couple players as well Sharon Dor again disappointingly has gone out on loan uh, he's gone out on loan to Sampdoria we've also uh, got rid of Billy Cometo as well Andrea Schaefer is the most expensive one that we've got rid of 2.6 million pounds he's gone over to Sporting as well, uh, the Hungarian central midfielder. But the players that we brought in for 6.75 million, we brought in this guy from Verona, the right wing back. Look at all the positions he can play up and down the right hand side. Filippo uh, looks like he is a key improvement for us in that wing back position. And of course, in a five back, you need these wing backs. Uh, we also picked up this guy, David Pereira da Costa. To, he will play as a central midfielder here. 17 uh, technique, 16 passing, 16 dribbling. This guy's going to be an absolute threat on the ball. We've picked him up from Juve obviously he starts at Len uh, and then we've picked him up from there uh, they paid 15 million pounds for him we got him for 14.5 million pounds that's an absolute bargain for a player of this caliber if you ask me and we picked their pocket for Nicolo Ravella as well now he obviously wasn't getting as much game time as he wanted at Juve but he is going to be our new starting defensive midfielder 15.75 million pounds for him he actually oh he played a lot more than I thought last season 30 starts and 21 appearances and uh, 21 sub appearances in all that's not a lot though. 
for a player this talented, that is not a lot. So if we go into the tactic, guys, this is going to be the team to power things forward. This is We've got so many options now. The fact that people like Hannibal Mejbri, Ravella and stuff like that, Zima on the bench as well. We are stacked in this particular setup, but Yeboah and Luka are going to do the damage yet again. I am supremely certain. If we go into the competitions tab, we do have the same four competitions as last year. Uh, obviously, last year we were in the Super Cup representing the Coppa Italia winners. This time we are representing the Serie A winners and we take on Inter yet again. The board wants us to reach the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia. They just want us to be competitive in the Champions League and finish in the top half of Serie A, which has already started. Uh, Milan and, and Napoli have picked up three points on Lucky Fiorentina and Salernitana. If we take a look at the season preview, though, we are predicted to finish in eighth. We are odds of 33 to 1 to win the league now. And I have just noticed that Jack Grealish is an Inter Milan player. What is going on? That front three from Napoli, Kovarik, Skelia, Osimhen, and Bruni Bargi. I don't want to deal with that either. Hey, they've gone and strengthened. This is going to be this is going to be a tough season. Let's get season five done and see if we can retain Serie A. So guys, season five with Palermo is done and dusted, and we've gone back to back. Yes, we secured the Serie A title, this time a little bit more emphatically. Only uh, five losses and three draws all season. 30 victories out of the 38 games. We top the league. We win the league by five points ahead of Inter Milan. Absolutely smashing it yet again. In terms of the Champions League, we got to the round of 16 again after probably a, a bit of a disappointing one and we lose on penalties. <sighs> lose on penalties to Liverpool. If we take a look at the penalty shootout here, they scored all, scored all their penalties. Fabinho, Calhanoglu, uh, which Vieira is that? Fabio Vieira and Dewsbury Hall scored their penalties. And Done and Piccoli missed the penalties for us and Liverpool go through in the Champions League. I thought it was going to be. I thought it could have been, uh, but their team is still very good. They've signed Timber. Uh, who else have they got over here? Still got Mo Salah, Darwin Nunez, still got him. So it's still a very good Liverpool team, uh, and they go through there. We got knocked out in the third round of the Coppa Italia by Spezia. Again, another penalty exit. Uh, rather disappointingly, goes to show that maybe we need to work on our penalties. Atal missed the penalty to see us go out there, which is devastating news. We did win the Super Cup again, but who cares? It is only the season opener. Four goals to one. Absolutely battered Inter, who still have Alessandro Bastoni, Barrella, uh, and some of these players as well. So um, a very good Inter team that we've kind of wiped the floor with there. Uh, I'll expand the lead just to talk about this just a little bit more. Plus 68 in terms of goal difference. This tactic is very good. 27 goals for Yeboa. 24 goals for Lorenzo Luca as well. Um, this team is absolutely stacked. And I have to give a massive shout out to Lorenzo Luca. I do this all the time. Sometimes I think he's worse in FM23. If you know how to play to his strengths, he's really not. He got 29 goals in the league last season, 24 in the league this season. He's still good, guys. He's still really, really good. If you do like the rebuild content, though, guys, let me know down below who you would like me to rebuild next. And if you do want to see more rebuilds from me, check out this playlist popping up right here. It's all the rebuilds that we've done in FM23.